Greetings and welcome. Today we will learn one of the modern high pressure high capacity forced circulation boiler. Martin Benson was first working on the idea of forced circulation drum boilers. But in 1918, Walter Douglas Lamont introduced the forced circulation boiler from concept into existence. Lamont was a lieutenant commander and an engineer in the US Navy. US Navy mainly used Babcock and Wilcox boiler during World War II, which were used commonly at that time. But on the other hand, in Europe and several German and Japanese ships used Lamont boilers. Lamont boiler was able to produce steam at a rate of about 50,000 kg per hour within 15 to 20 minutes. So let us understand the high pressure modern boiler which we call the Lamont boiler. The basic principle of Lamont boiler is water and steam mixers are circulated with the help of an external pump which supplies water at higher pressure than in a natural circulation boiler through long tubes of small diameters. This is the steam drum and this is the circulation pump and all these are small diameter tubes. Now the important components of Lamont boiler. One of the important component is steam and water separating drum. And next, circulating pump, radiant evaporator, and this is convective evaporator. This red color pipes are superheater, and this is economizer. And of course, there is air preheater above the economizer. This is the air preheater, which supplies the hot air to the furnace. And all these are enclosed within some refractory structures. And the hot gases of combustion passes through these tubes and it is discharged to the atmosphere. Now let us understand the most important parts of the Lamont boiler. This is the grate on which the fuel is placed for burning and the hot air is supplied from bottom of the grain. This is the furnace where the fuel is burned and hot gas of combustion goes up and ultimately it is dispersed to the atmosphere at a height through the chimney. Then the first water tubes are the radiant evaporator and next are the convective evaporator these are also water tubes steam from convective evaporator enters into the steam separating drum so this is the drum which contains water as well as steam water from steam separating drum enters into the radiative evaporator through the circulating pump this is superheater. This is the economizer. Feed pump which supplies water to the boiler through the economizer. This is the blower which pump the air through the air preheater and the hot air enters into the furnace. So this is the entry of the hot air from the air preheater. This is the chimney, air preheater. These are the main components and construction of Lamont boiler. So water enters into the and it after getting heated it enters into the steam drum 
water from steam drum is circulated by this circulating pump. It is first supplied to the radiant evaporator. From radiant evaporator, water and steam mixer passes through the evaporative tubes and it enters into the steam drum in the form of steam only. The steam then enters into the superheater and superheated steam enters into the turbine for production of mechanical energy and the exhaust of the steam turbine enters into the condenser and this condenser condenses the steam to water and this water can again be used as feed water for the boiler and this is done by the feed pump. Let us understand the La Monte boiler with the help of this 3D model. So La Monte boiler consists of many parts that we have mentioned. It has a steam separating drum, one economizer, one radiant evaporator, one convective evaporator, one superheater, one economizer and one air preheater. So let us start with economizer. This is the economizer with the feed pump. This is feed pump and these are the economizer tubes which is exposed to the hot gases towards the end of the combustion chamber and just before the chimney. And this is steam separating drum. The feed water is supplied to the steam separating drum through the economizer. And most of the sensible heat is supplied to the feed water while it passes through the economizer. So the feed pump pump the water through the economizer to the steam separating drum. Okay, this is circulating pump. Water from the steam separating drum is drawn by the circulating pump and it circulates water through evaporator tubes under pressure because Lamont boiler is a forced circulation boiler and for that it needs one pump and this is called a circulating pump. Now the radiant evaporator. So this is the radiant evaporator. Water from the drum enters the radiant evaporator through the circulating pump. The water is heated by the radiant heat from the combustion chamber. Generally, the radiant tubes are attached to the walls of the refractory structure near the combustion chamber or near the furnace. After radiant evaporation, it will be convective evaporator. This is convective evaporator. Water and steam mixer coming out of the radiant evaporator enters the convective evaporator tubes. In radiant evaporator, some of the water is converted to steam. So the mixer of water and steam enters into the convective evaporator. The hot flue gases passing over the evaporator tubes transfer a large portion of the heat to the water by convection. And during this time, when the water steam mixer passes through the convective tubes or convective evaporator, it is completely converted to steam and that steam enters into the steam separating drum again. The steam from steam separating drum now we'll enter into the superheater. Yes, this is the superheater. From the steam separating drum, steam enters the superheater tubes and steam is superheated by the hot flue gases passing over them. And this superheated steam goes to the turbine for developing the mechanical power. Now let us see the air preheater. This is the air preheater. 
air preheater is located just above the economizer and just before the chimney. Tubes of the air preheater will be exposed to the heat before the hot flue gases enter inside the chimney. Now this is the blower. Blower for the air preheater. The atmospheric air is pumped by this blower through the air preheater and up to the combustion chamber or furnace where air is required for combustion of the fuel. Air after being heated by the air preheater is blown to the furnace with the help of one pipe this way. Now this is the chimney. After the air preheater, the flue gases enter inside the chimney and the hot flue gases are discharged to the atmosphere. All these arrangements, radiative evaporator, convective evaporator, superheater, economizer and air preheater must be enclosed within a refractory structure so that all these components are exposed to the heat produced by combustion of fuel inside the combustion chamber. And this is the refractory ar arrangement inside which the combustion takes place and tubes are exposed to the heat of combustion. This is the furnace. So the combustion gases from furnace goes up and ultimately it is discharged to the atmosphere. And by that time, the radiant evaporator, convective evaporator, superheater, economizer and air preheater are exposed to the heat. So this is the complete view of the Lamont boiler. The superheated steam enters into the turbine and this is the turbine that produces the power for generation of electricity. Superheated steam entering into the turbine produces the power and it is discharged to the condenser. This one is condenser. The function of a condenser is to convert the steam to liquid or water. And this water or condensate coming out of the condenser has to be collected in a well and that is called the hot well. So the condensate are preserved or stored in a hot well and from this hot well the water can again be pumped to the boiler with the help of the feed pump. So this is how a Lamont boiler works at very high pressure. Pressure developed by a Lamont boiler is up to 170 bar pressure and steam temperature is up to 500 degrees centigrade. Now we will discuss some advantages of Lamont boiler. As we know, Lamont boiler is a high pressure, high temperature, higher capacity, forced circulation, modern boiler. One of the advantages of the Lamont boiler is its capacity. It can produce up to 45 to 50 ton of steam per hour. Lamont boiler can produce steam up to 170 bar pressure at a temperature of 500 degrees centigrade, which is superheated steam. The operation of Lamont boiler is easy and quick starting is possible. Design of the boiler is flexible because every parts can be assembled and disassembled according to the requirement. The high heat transfer rate because of the many tubes within the boiler and the number of tubes increases the area of the heat transfer. Lamont boiler has no problem of scale formation because it is a forced circulation boiler. Water is forced into the pipes and because of this high pressure, the scale formation is not possible. The force of water and steam flow itself act as a blow off operation. Because of the small steam drum, the space occupied by the boiler is less. So these are some of the advantages of Lamont boiler. And uh, of course, there are a few disadvantages. 
there is a tendency to form bubbles on the surface of the tubes resulting in the reduced heat transfer rate. During the formation of steam within the water tubes, the bubbles are formed and these bubbles act as the barrier for the heat transfer from the tubes to the water. Of course, the initial and operating cost of Lamont boiler is higher because it produces high pressure, high temperature and, and the capacity of the boiler is very high. Maintenance costs are very high as it produces high pressure, high temperature steam and the capacity and rate of steam production is very high. Therefore, uh, definitely the maintenance cost will be higher. So these are the disadvantages of Lamont boiler. As a conclusion, we can say the centrifugal pump which circulates water is the heart of the boiler. Because pressure developed by the boiler is actually given by the centrifugal pump which supplies the water inside the boiler. So that is why it can be considered as the heart of this boiler. Lamont boiler was able to produce steam at a rate of about 50,000 kg per hour within 15 to 20 minutes. That is easy starting. This boiler is mainly used for generation of electricity because it is very suitable for power generation. It can be reassembled as a natural circulation boiler also, although it is designed for force circulation boiler by removing uh, the circulating pump and with little bit of modification it can be reassembled as a natural circulation boiler also okay this is all about Lamont boiler in our next video we'll discuss about Benson boiler which is a super critical boiler and Benson boiler produces steam at a pressure higher than the super critical pressure. Another characteristic of the Benson boiler is it is almost like a Lamon boiler but it has no drum. So this is also known as drumless boiler. So thank you for watching.